part of those studies which were done and the council accepted, uh, that does not mean the council has no say on whether something is going to be built. All of these projects will be brought to council and they'll be approved and rates will be adjusted. Um, but yeah, if the council decides that they do not want to proceed with surface water reservoir or the, tri or the uh, shop facility or for, uh, what was the other one? The Northeast Tank then certainly the council, all the council has to say is we're not going to proceed with that. We will adjust the capital plan accordingly. And don't don't misunderstand. I'm not suggesting certainly. that future councils over the next seven years will not approve those. You bet. My concern is <clears throat> I didn't realize we were being asked to approve rates tonight. The the item in the action on the on the agenda is accept the rate study report. Yes. But a comment I believe you made, Gary, from the podium was accept the rates tonight, which tells me already. we're accepting the rates for 2020 in a vote tonight, and I will not vote for that. No. We're not doing no. that. We can't do that. What I said was approve future rate structures. That does not mean you, council still retains all of the authority to do that. We're asking you to accept the rate study and that that will, be, that will help guide us through the next seven years. But as I indicated with the capital plans, it's the council at any time can adopt different rates. As we come to you next year with water, sewer, sanitation rates in the budget process, that you will give us direction on how you want to proceed with that. And at that time, it's appropriate to say, okay, what's next on the capital list? Are we moving ahead with that? And Les and his people and Don will be able to answer those questions. I just want to assure the council and the community that there's flexibility here. This is not, okay, this is what we're going to do. You're locked in. Because as Les indicated, depending on wastewater treatment plant phase five, it may be up to 12 million and maybe something less than that. We're not sure what the regulations are going to require. So we have to have that flexibility. But as you can see from the magnitude of the capital plan, if something, if it is less, then hopefully what we can do is look at other needs and take those and start knocking those down as we need to. Yeah, and, and as I said, I, I, I'm all for planning. I'm mm -hmm. all for looking ahead. I think staff would be remiss if they were not doing this or the consultants we vote to hire to, to help look forward and so forth. I mean, you can't wake up on Monday morning and decide you need a new well or a new tank mm -hmm. by Tuesday. I know that that isn't how it works. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned that we're not charging citizens today sure. for things that are seven plus years out and that we're, we're, we're planning and structuring, and, w and I'm fine with that. I had a citizen call me this past week and ask some very interesting questions that I haven't had time to get t with less about the tanks. You know, why this, why that? Can you not build a single tank somewhere between the Northeast and the Northwest and save a little money? I certainly don't know the answer to those questions, but citizens, at least that one, apparently are paying attention. Sure. Uh, Hopefully, reading the rate study and finding the, the, the you know the questions, mm -hmm. and I'd just love to have that happen when it does. It's way too infrequent. Way. Yeah. Looks like uh, Don may have a response to that particular question because we do have some other council questions up here. Yeah, I think I can address a couple of them actually. Um, this rate study, as Gary mentioned, um, does provide an outline for the next seven years. And during the seven years, the rate study, even the rates today, contemplate some of those expenditures over the next seven years. I will highlight, though, as Gary mentioned, the debt service, and that's why I brought, brought it back to this slide, that, you know, debt service on roughly eight, what, $7.8 million is a lot less than just um, uh, cash flow for that, you know, it's, it's going to be a 20-year bond payment on $7.8 million. So the rates that are contemplated on the back end certainly would address some of those bond issues as they come up for those facilities because we're not paying cash as you go. I will also note that this is a 21 million, roughly $21 million worth of projects in the water fund alone, and the sewer is approximately the same, and $12.9 million is debt service. So the remaining seven, almost $8 million is pay-as-you-go, which is contemplated in part of the rates that we're adopting uh, in 2014, 2015. The 10%, the reason those are 
even if those bond, even if we say city council says in 2017, 2020 that we're not going to do those things, um, there are other needs that that less is identified in its capital plan, like a uh, sewer clay line replacement program that's a huge um, issue by itself, could be addressed in the rates that are addressed today as part of that pay as you go. Is that, I, I say this with the utmost respect, but that really sounds like don't worry, we can find a way to spend it. <laughs> no, what it's, mm. you might say that, but we, <laughs> less whittled down that, to that $21 million to try and keep the rates at a, to, and mitigate those rates as low as possible. So um, rate over the seven years, if council, if this council you know, scenario you provided said we don't want to do an ops facility and we do not want to do a new reservoir, and that's $8.8 .8 million that fall off the table, then the rates would be adjusted accordingly, and we would need to reconvene the, the, the rate consultant to determine what kind of rates would be out in 2015 or 16. And, and I picked those because they were way out there and they were large. Sure. And we would need to reconvene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Wayne, you had your hand up. Well, when Fowler made his first comments, um, I kind of I kind of tended to want to agree with him a little bit until I thought a little bit more along the lines of long-range planning. And even though we haven't identified what we're going to do about a water supply facility, in the future, we know we're going to do something. We have to do something. Uh, you want to like it at the long-term care insurance. I don't care how you do it, but you know, we we do owe the citizens of Moscow. We have that responsibility to plan for the future when we know that we have to do something. We may not have a plan in its entirety yet, but what we do know is it's going to be expensive. And if we don't start putting money away for those future projects, when suddenly it becomes time that we've identified those projects, then that money may not be there. And then we're looking at some catastrophic fundraising. So at the same time, when we look at the budget each year, that's when we set the, set the rates. If these weren't enterprise funds, I'd be a lot more concerned about money being shifted around if it wasn't being spent. But being enterprise funds, Water funds are spent with water funds, sanitation with sanitation, sewage with sewage. Each year we'll set the rates as we deem is necessary, but I think for a rate study for what's been put into this, and there's been a lot of time that's been put into this, I am ready to accept it. And Sue, I saw your hand up too. Um, well, there is in the summary the recommendation that the city annually revisit the rate study um, to review if revenue and expense projections are reasonable. And there is flexibility because at the last meeting workshop, I think we, when we were looking at the cemetery and just how much they actually use, um, we decided that we weren't going to charge the cemetery right up front the very first year all that it costs and so we were phasing that over t a few years at least two and a few years the other thing that was um that i don't want to get lost is also at that meeting um john mills from mcdonald's uh expressed they had a whole entirely new system that kept the amount of fats that would normally come from a restaurant uh out of this out of the uh, wastewater flow and therefore he was promised that um, the city would relook at his rate because if you saw how the restaurant rate jumped to like $125 per month that he felt that that wasn't fair because his restaurant with it, the expense of the infrastructure that he put in uh, he would not be putting that much extra fats and whatever into the system. So I don't want that to get lost because that was that was promised that that would be re-looked at. Yeah, and I think in that same conversation we discussed else. about car, car washes that were, you know, reclaiming and, and filtering yeah. water on site and things like that. And um, Sue, you mentioned or Nancy mentioned the, the, the rate committee and recognizing the folks. Yeah, I was tr trying to write down all the names and I, I know I missed a few. But uh, you mentioned John Mills, Dan Schoenberg, Tom Bodie, John Kimberling, Megan, and I can't think of her last name. Um, um, apologize. 
Lori Wynn, who is the LSI, she only represented on the, on the sanitation piece of it. Larry Lucas, Brian Johnson with U of I, Mike Holthouse, Ken Peters from the cemetery, and a couple others that I didn't, ha didn't get a chance to write their names down. Tim Brown. Tim Brown, yes, city Dick council Adams. liaison. Mm -hmm. Huh? Dick Adams. Adams. Dick Adams. Get those uh, people in the record. They, they were <laughs> they were instrumental, and and we started this in the fall of 2010. Council brought it forth and adopted the rate or commenced the rate committee in 2011. This hasn't been a short process because of the, the all the all of the things that occurred through the infrastructure being a large dollar amount, and uh, I think less. Um, did a pretty succinct job on on infrastructure needs, but um, I can't remember the miles of, of sewer lines. But there's like 68 or 69 miles of sewer lines alone, and you, you didn't even mention that piece of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and then the the last piece that you mentioned, Nancy, about um, the uh, or mm. Sue about the BODs and suspended solids is that. Um, we looked at, and it was too late for this, kind of came late in the process about measuring the strength of the, those, those um, systems, and, and we have it now a person that actually can go out and do that process and look at restaurants as an example and see what their factor should be. And we did commit to that, and we will be looking at that, but it was kind of late in the process, so we stuck with this classification process we currently have. Um, and this went through a review process in 2006 mm -hmm. to get to this classification. So it's been a long process, and I think it was well done. And I think the the the, the citizen committee um, really did a lot of effort trying to and recognizing the, the age of the infrastructure and funding that 42 million dollars. And yes, um, Walter, we will be looking at that down the road when if and if should something fall off the the table as far as uh, capital, capital expenses. Well, I was impressed the last rate study uh, report that came around when we we acknowledged again late in the process that there were a at least a couple of outliers that were um, private residences in multi-unit buildings that only were served by a single meter, and we figured they were historic structures that couldn't be adapted, and we figured out a special rate just for those to accommodate yeah. them and, and to be fair in that process. And I think the same thing can come from this new technology that's allowing restaurants to capture and the Tom Bodie was a big bases. average, you know, was that's impacted right. by that and right. with his expertise and, and the consultants. Uh, he, that's why he was on the committee again. Um, again, the, the citizens were really drivers in helping f formulate this, and which is why it took a longer process to go through and identify and identify Les's needs and say, yes, we do need those needs. So, Was anybody else wowed by this amount of planning and the thought that's gone into this and the, I mean, the representation of our community that's up there that uh, you know, we have 23,800 people in this community, and that looks like something you'd see in a much larger city uh, with the, the professionalism that's put forward. So I think we're going to need to have an exclusive strand of fiber for all this data. <laughs> <laughs> right. <coughs> Questions, anybody else? Wayne? I'd like to make a motion to accept the report. Second. Okay, we have <laughs> Wayne's motion. We have Tim's second. Any further discussion? And does staff require anything more than acceptance of that report? No, ma'am. Okay, Wayne, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries unanimously, and the uh, 2013 Sanitation Water and Sewer Rate Study Report is thereby uh, accepted.